welcome to the Business Masterclass and its second module in the learning series of business models. My name is Karin Andersson and I am employed at RISE, Research Institutes of Sweden. At RISE I am a researcher but also a PhD student. My colleague Mohamed Reza is a research assistant at SLU, the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. Mohamed Reza has written his thesis about business model innovation within the agricultural sector. Both Mohamed Reza and I and project members in the Rubismo project. This masterclass is established through a European Commission program, Horizon 2020, for research and innovation. The masterclass contains four modules. The first module comprehends business models and introduces the business model canvas. The second module explores the business model canvas value proposition, where the third handles the right-hand side, in the other words, the consumer side of the business. The last and fourth module explores the bits and pieces of the left-hand side of the business model canvas. This is the second module and will therefore be about the value proposition. As a preparation and a home task, you have been asked to read this article. You can find the link below the picture. If you are looking at this video on YouTube, you can also find the link in the video description. When you have read the article, discussing groups of three to four persons, is there any case of remarks or do you have any questions? If you have questions, I really hope that Reza will answer the questions in the following video. Thank you so much, Kai. I will start explaining value and value proposition. Value is created when product features such as design, service, or support meet the customer's needs. Therefore, value proposition is about the customer and must specify what exactly the company intends to offer for the customer's life. In other words, value proposition explains the difference between a company's offers and those of its competitors and shows why customers have to buy from a company. Before continuing the other slides, I highly recommend you watch this video. It is about value proposition canvas. If you are looking at the PowerPoint format, you can click on the picture to see the video. Otherwise, you can find the link called value proposition canvas in the video description if you are watching the video on YouTube. Today we will work on this picture and as you saw, the left side is called value map and the right side is called customer profile. But before going in detail, let me add that a business that generates value less than its costs will disappear, even if the company creates the best value proposition. So getting the value proposition and business model in the right side needs back and forth process to nail it. As you can see on your screen, we have to zoom into the detailed picture to see if the customer value proposition creates value for customer or zoom out to see if we can profitability create, deliver and capture value around this customer value proposition. Value proposition canvas has two sides. With the customer profile, we clarify our customer understanding and with the value map, we describe how we intend to create value for that customer. And finally, we achieve fit between the two when one meets the other. Therefore, through the value map, we can create value and then fit in with a set of customer features that we can see in the market. Okay, with the flashback to the previous session and the company, are you on? I want to review again who are the customers, how pain is solved, and how gain is created. We look at the short animation first.
More than 8 million tons of plastic are thrown into the sea every year. What if all this plastic would just vanish into non-toxic components? The Italian company BioOn might have found the answer. In 2007, a group of entrepreneurs established BioOn, a startup dedicated to the production of new 100% ecological and sustainable materials. The basis of their success is built on their highly qualified staff, mainly biologists and chemists. Their pioneering invention, using renewable resources or agricultural waste materials to produce polyhydroxyl canodes, short PHAs, truly organic plastic. In collaboration with international, scientific and economic key partners, their valuable product was tested for sustainability and possible applications. The bio on PHA is a linear polyester produced in nature by non-pathogenic and non-genetically modified bacteria. The bacteria feed on all kinds of sugars, thereby producing an energy reserve, the PHA. The PHA is extracted without the use of any chemical organic solvents and in a completely sustainable process. The dried PHA powder can be coloured and extruded into pellets like the common oil-based plastics. The PHA pellets and powder can be used to create materials with extremely different properties and purposes, like cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, packaging design, clothing and smart applications. But the best is yet to come. Once used and dumped, this organic plastic will naturally, in just a few days, dissolve into non-toxic molecules and metabolites, no matter if it ends up in the soil, in river water or the sea. The successful intellectual property company is licensing out their technology to customers worldwide and in the meanwhile continue to research to enlarge the biomass used, define production standards and identify new areas of application. As the story of BioOn shows, innovative, groundbreaking ideas can make the difference. So get off the beaten track. Let's see who are the customers, how pain is solved and how gain is created. Organic plastic can be used in cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, packaging design, clothing and soap. What paints are solved? New products can be dissolved within a few days and without any toxic materials, no matter if it is left in the soil or sea bottom. And what gain are created? 100% ecological and sustainable materials are produced. Now it's time to go more in detail and work on the customer profile and value map. I will describe them including the case Clemmings Ostrom that we worked on its business model canvas in the previous session. You can also read through the case again by clicking on the link or watch a short video of the company by clicking on the picture. And if you are looking at the video on YouTube, you can find the links of the case and video in the video description. Okay, I will start with the customer profile and its first block, customer jobs. Customer jobs is a task customers try to perform or complete. Problems they try to solve or needs they try to satisfy. We have different types of customer jobs. The first is functional jobs, when our customers try to perform a specific task, such as eating healthy as a consumer. The next is social jobs, when our customers want to be perceived by others. For example, we like a stylish consumer. And the last is emotional or personal jobs, for instance, achieve a sense of job security in the workplace. And it should be noted that all jobs have the same importance to our customers. 
some are important and crucial and some are insignificant and customers don't care about. Now we can look at our case. And here, let me note that we have to make value proposition canvas for every customer segment. Therefore, we only work on restaurants and what tasks they try to perform. In this case, for example, restaurants would buy if wild oysters give them a competitive advantage. And in addition, restaurants are looking for a high volume supplier. The next block is the customer pains. Pain is whatever before, during, and after getting a job done annoys our customers. We have different types of pains. For example, functional, social, emotional, undesired characteristics such as an ugly design, something that slows down the customer. For example, I lack the time to get a job done accurately, and finally, something with negative consequences. For instance, people may lose credibility if a company uses a special way to solve a problem. And like the jobs that can be crucial and insignificant, pains can be extreme or moderate. Back to the case, let's look at some pains that I have identified. Restaurants don't risk on an unequipped and unknown company. Customers will not buy if sustainability issues are not addressed. And finally, bad taste and spoiled oysters ruin the reputation of restaurants. The last block of the customer profile is the customer gains. Gains are benefits, results, and characteristics that customers desire or require. And in fact, they are the outcomes of a value proposition that help customers get a job done well. Here we have a list of questions that can help us understand customer expectations. For example, which savings our customers would value? What quality level do they expect? What positive social consequences do our customers desire? And what would be a big relief to them? And finally, Games can also be ranked from essential to nice to have. Let's look at some customer gains that I have identified in this case. Customers would value if ecosystem is preserved. A strong marketing introduces the product to the restaurants. A well-equipped or expanded company attracts the customers. And finally, fresh and tasty products delight chefs. All right, now that you're familiar with the customer profile, let me give you two important tips here. First of all, we have to put the same ideas in the pains and gains as opposite of each other. For example, I have put fresh and tasty products delight chefs in the gain and bad taste and spoiled oysters ruin the reputation of restaurants in the pain. In addition, we have to ask why several times to understand the customer's real motivations. When it comes to restaurants are looking for a high volume supplier, the company owner should ask how many kilos per week can satisfy the restaurants. 100 kilo, 200 kilo, and so on. Okay, the next step is ranking. And we can rank jobs, pains, and gains, as you can see on your screen now. Ranking is important in order to address what customers really care about. And although it is difficult to identify what really matters to customers, but our understanding can be improved with the customer's interactions. And back to the case, Clemming's Ostron, you can see, for example, how I have ranked jobs, pains, and gains based on my understanding of this case. Okay, we continue with the value map. Value map has three blocks, and I will start with the products and services. 
where our customers gains and pains are identified we need to produce a product or service that best meets their expectations to do so we should ask what bundle of products and services do we offer that help our customer perform a functional social or emotional function in other words which products and services help our customer perform their tasks and when we look at our case we can see that the company owner harvests two kinds of wild oysters for restaurants and in addition she delivers oysters herself to the restaurants and talks to chefs about their uniqueness pain relievers is the next block here we need to know how have our products or services alleviated specific customer pains in other words we need to reduce something that prevents customers to get a job done for example could products and services save time and money show better performance or quality remove negative social consequences and so on let me add that great value propositions focus on the pains that matter to customers therefore we don't need to address all the pains that we have identified. Instead, we should solve the pains that have extreme effects. Back to the case, let's see how has the company addressed customer pains. Luta handles the seafloor with care. She dives and harvests per order and doesn't put pressure on the oysters. In addition, she collects plastics left in the beaches and sea and finally the company holds oyster safaris to increase its reputation and the last plug is the game creators which shows our intention to create what the customer expects game creators don't need to address all the gains that are identified instead focusing on what is relevant to customers and makes a difference to them matters here we have to know could our products and services create quality levels that customer expects show positive social consequences fulfill our customers aspirations and dreams and so on and back to the case we can see that the company has addressed sustainability and introduced itself as a unique supplier in the market in addition consumers are surprised with the chef's new dishes cooked or flavors made from the shells so before i show you how the customer profile and value map fit together let me say that pain relievers and gain creators create value for customers in different ways but either of them can address pains and gains at the same time for example when it comes to Luta dives and harvests per order and doesn't put pressure on the oysters, you can see that sustainability concerns and freshness are addressed at the same time. Important tip here is that we have control over pain relievers and gain creators, but not over gains and pains. In fact, we decide how we intend to create value to address pains, gains, and jobs. However, we don't decide for which pains, gains, and jobs the customer has. Now it's time to see how the customer profile and value map fit together. We achieve fit when our customers get excited about our value proposition, it means that we have addressed something that customers care about. And as I've already mentioned, we cannot address all the pains and gains that we have identified in our customer profile. It means that some of them are solvable and some are not. I have filled in all blocks for this case. As you can see, the company owner has tried to make a good market and brand for herself, but she still needs some equipment and even more buildings. In addition, when it comes to look for high volume supplier, we can see that the owner cannot handle it completely because according to the swedish rules and regulations she is not allowed to harvest more than a standard level each week 
All right. I think you are familiar now with the value proposition canvas. So like the previous session, I want you to do a task individually or in a group of three to four people. Please follow the instructions and read the case by clicking on the link if you are looking at the PowerPoint format. Otherwise, you can see the link in video description called Ocean Rainforest link if you are watching the video on YouTube. You will also be shown a short video of that company in the next slide. In the crystal clear Atlantic waters of the Faroe Islands, a new superfood is cultivated, seaweed, a real treasure trove of benefits. Seaweed is one of the natural sources of iodine, contains vitamins, antioxidants, and minerals like calcium and iron and polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are essential for the human body. By processing the harvested macroalgae, they add value to a variety of raw products. They can be used as food and animal feed, for cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, as well as fertilizer, biofuel, and packaging material. Front runner in the developing of offshore seaweed cultivation systems is Ocean Rainforest in the Faroe Islands. Led by their pioneering founder in 2012, the company started to discover the highly untapped potential of seaweed and is today building up their business based on this huge and fast-growing market potential. Seaweed cultivation has a large business potential. It grows very fast, without the need of fertilizers. It absorbs nitrogen and more CO2 than a tropical rainforest. Fighting climate change and cleaning the ocean. Up to six harvests can be done from the same lines without reseeding, and two harvests per year are viable. It relieves pressure from arable land, and two-thirds of the surface of the earth being water, the areas available for cultivation are nearly unlimited. It's a sustainable alternative for food and feed, and creates local jobs. In the Faroe Islands, seaweed already has been the driver for local development in a rural coastal area, and replication opportunities are open for anyone living next to the shore of the North Atlantic. Additionally, the cultivation system developed by Ocean Rainforest is now being adapted for kelp species in the Pacific Ocean in a demonstration project in California, USA. Now we are done with the second session and here you can see our reference list. In the next session, we will continue with the right hand side of the business model canvas. And if you have any question, you are very welcome to send us email. See you in the next session and thank you so much for listening.